Excellent. I guess we are ready to start. Um, good morning, everybody. So here we are going to talk about the uh, role of NFE research in uh, open source and open standards. I'm Ramki Krishnan from Dell, and here is Pradeep Sen from HP. Uh, the other co-authors are uh, busy in other summits, uh, notably Etsy NFE, not able to make it. But I uh, hope you enjoy the session, Pradeep. So we thought we'd, uh, since many of the, in the audience may not be familiar with NFE as such, we thought we'd give you a crash course of a few minutes on what is NFE, why NFE, and then get into the open source and resource thing. So this is just a set of uh, a summary of the kinds of things which uh, a few years ago uh, some group of operators started looking at, network operators, network providers, looking at their networks and trying to see, and uh, tr looking at trends in their network, usage, uh, traffic, et cetera, and uh, looking at the issues they had to deal with. And uh, to many of you, these may be familiar to some, they may not, but in an operator in a network, operator's network, everything takes time. It's very inflexible. Uh, you cannot change the network very easily. You, launching new services is difficult. Uh, takes a long time. Even if you decide what a service is and you decide everything about it, all the pieces you need, all the equipment and technology you need, putting it together, testing it, all of that takes time. And pretty often, you need to want a new service or a new feature. You have to ask the network equipment vendors who are providing equipment into to develop that feature for you, and that takes some time. So it's a really long development and uh, service launch process. So that was the kind of thing people were dealing with. The other thing which was happening back then, uh, so we started looking at this. I was at Verizon at that time. We started looking at this back in, say, 2007 or so. Uh, and the traffic was growing rapidly. Now we all know this is a fact that we were seeing the trends, exponential growth. And then you looked at the cost of handling that traffic, which was commensurate with the traffic growth, it didn't match the revenue curve, right? The revenues were flat, declining, and here's the exponential cost curve. So you had to do something. The other set of things which happened, which uh, we looked at, were uh, uh, inefficiency in the network. So you'd have to build the network for peak demand. And most of the time, the net, that, that part of the network was not being used. So when you looked at a part of the network, um, and did some um, uh, measurements and statistics, we could see that 80% of the full capacity over the 24-hour period was not being used. So that kind of inefficiency in the network complexity, there were every new feature service aspect we were adding on appliances uh, at the edges of the network. So when we had a new set of services, we were building new um, uh, new um, infrastructure for that. So you had a mishmash of networks, of equipment, and very complex to handle and manage uh, from an operations perspective. So all of these were sort of the reason some of us started looking at ways to handle um, all of these in some unified way. And that was where this whole business of NFE was born. Uh, a few of us got together. And um, um, uh, created a white paper to describe the problem, created this uh, group uh, under Etsy, the NFE ISG, the uh, industry specification group, to focus on this problem. And this is just saying, you know, where we started. We were half a dozen people who talked about this uh, back in uh, maybe uh, late 2011. And then we got a few more together in 2012. And by the time we had our first meeting, we had lots of people joining. And now it's really a very vibrant community with 240 member companies and 37 network operators. And so what has been done in this effort uh, over the two years, and now it's getting on almost two and a half now, I guess. Um, uh, no, I'm, yeah. So uh, we, a lot of uh, the initial set of framework documents, use cases, requirements were published. And early this year, we had the detailed um, specification requirements documents published. 
They cover all aspects of the architecture. And later on somewhere, we will have uh, a, a picture. Some of you obviously have seen it, but of the overall architecture. And the other thing which is interesting is that a proof of concept program was launched. And uh, you have a large number of proof of concepts worldwide underway with multiple companies joining to uh, demonstrate uh, the concept. So this is sort of what's been achieved. Uh, if you haven't looked at this stuff, uh, you can go to that website. This is the easiest way to go to it. If you just go to Etsy to negotiate, it's very hard. So just go to etsy.org slash NFV. Uh, you'll find all the documents there, other information there. And if you want, if, if you're not familiar with this and you want to start somewhere, I'd suggest look at the use case document and the architecture framework document. That gives you an overview of what kind of use cases our operator is looking at for um, this effort uh, and uh, gives you an idea of the framework they have decided on using. Uh, and then this is sort of a visual view of saying what, what, was the, what the intent was moving from uh, specialized equipment um, developed for certain functions to trying to get them into software running on standard, uh, standard hardware. And obviously, you need some things around it. You need orchestration. You need the networking, et cetera. So where are we now? So at a very high level, I'd say this is where we are. We are at a point where we're over the barrier of acceptance. Is this even going to work? What is this thing called a, a virtualization? Virtualization was totally unfamiliar to most network operators. Why should we even use this? This, this cloud thing works for enterprise. It, we, we cannot use this. So that original ba set of barriers has largely been overcome. Of course, you know, there's a spread in the market. Some people are still behind. Some people are way ahead. But on, on, on an average, uh, you'd say that most people are over the feasibility barrier and now worrying about the operational questions. How do I make this, this operational? How do I get it into my network? How does it work with my operation support systems? Does it meet my performance? Does it meet my reliability concerns? That kind of a thing. Uh, most suppliers have started to move into delivery of product phase. And all these there were ecosystems which developed over this time of groups of companies getting together to do stuff. And initially, they were just trying to get things to work together. And now it's more around, how do I integrate these into whole solutions? And the standards work, which started with defining what this is about, is starting to get into some of the details. But the other big thing which is more relevant at this uh, forum is that some of us who were working in the standards or pre-standards kind of forums realize that if you just keep following the standards track, the typical telco standards track, the typical network operator standards track, that's a long process. You spend a long time standardizing things, agreeing on things, and then people build products. And that just wasn't tenable in the market today. So some of us got together and said, let's try and see if we can leverage open source to accelerate this. And that's where OPNFV was born uh, late last year. Uh, and its intent is to develop, based on open source, a reference platform where you can test and integrate various things. And more than a reference platform, perhaps a reference framework where you can even uh, try out alternate architectures is what we're striving for. And the goal is really to. Um, uh, bypass or short circuit the standardization process. There, there's a room for standardization, and some of the details will get worked out in the various uh, bodies. But uh, we're hoping that a main part of this can be done through open source. This is the model of OPNFE, that it's not intended to be another parallel development organization. We recognize that a lot of the things in OPNFE uh, we need for NFV are available in some of the other open source projects like OpenStack, like OpenDaylight. 
and, and the others listed here. So the idea is really it's a sort of integration project, so to speak, integration build project, where we bring things in from the other upstream organizations and develop the framework. And the idea is as we discover gaps or things we need, those would be upstream back into the um, other organization. So we are trying to follow an upstream first philosophy. Um, but it's still a new organization. The community is building. There are over 40, 40 companies now joined. Uh, we'll talk a little more about the projects later. So this is where we are with NF, uh, open source as it relates to NFV. And I'll hand it over to Ramki to tell you a little bit about the research. Tour. Excellent. So um, just to give you a background, so far we talked about its NFE standards, NFE, and then we talked about OP NFE. So to give you the research perspective on uh, the NFE research group, which is formed, um, so from the early stage, um, what uh, what's felt is um, there is a need for strong research activity, especially the applied research category, um, you know, around the um, especially addressing the various types of problems we so far talked about, right? Um, and um, essentially, uh, there is a first white paper, right, talking uh, the fast innovation cycle is one of the key benefits. So then what was felt was research is the right way to make that happen before jumping into products, right? And um, also notably, uh, the second NFE white paper uh, essentially suggested that we need to create an applied research group on study programs on NFE is basically mandated by the white paper. And um, also, they, during 2014, the HCNFE and sat together and put, a, put together a uh, research agenda, uh, you know, especially uh, which is more near-term focused, not something way, way out in the future, but kind of ones which are the next ones to the problems to solve so that uh, vendors can productize and op operators can capitalize that. That's kind of the uh, thought process there. And then with that, um, with all this happening, as you know, NFE and SDN are closely related. And the SDN research group was the first forum uh, where NFE is addressed. It was created in um, I IRTF, the Internet Research Task Force, which is a parallel organization to IETF, which is more standards-based. and. Uh, NFERG or the NFE research was discussed in SDNRG in the IETF 86 meeting in Orlando. Then this led to further informal discussions, uh, you know, among various NFE uh, enthusiasts um, all over the world, and also IETF, IRTF leadership in IETF 89. And um, essentially, with that, um, um, the we had the first uh, couple of interim meetings for NFERG. Uh, you know, and uh, finally, the formal charter of the NFE research group was uh, announced by the end of January 2015. That's kind of the quick uh, <coughs> you know, overview of the story and the history behind how uh, NFE research group was formed in uh, uh, IRTF. With that, so I'll describe you quickly the how the NFE research activities are specifically NFE RG's position. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, essentially. There is one on one side, there is open source, open stack, open daylight, OP, NFE, and we have the HC, NFE standards, basically. And also we have the academic conferences, um, IEEE ICC, IEEE Globecom, many premier conferences, uh, which often tend to be, I mean, uh, I don't want to say uh, purely theoretical, but tend to be more theoretical, solving abstract research problems, not the practical ones. And the goal of the NFE, IRTF NFE research group is to kind of actually piece all these things together but and focus on the uh, applied research category of problems so that you know there can be a real implementation in OpenStack, uh, Open Daylight or OPNP, <coughs> make a real implementation happen. By that, we really mean not writing requirements but actually translating the requirement to kind of at least a proof of concept doing system analysis. That's kind of the thought process around this whole research group get something really implemented, you know, even if it's fairly straightforward. And um, right now, where we are is it's open participation, 
300 plus members and uh, there are three meetings, formal meetings every year and interim meetings are typically at the IEEE conferences, especially the ICC and the Globecom, but we also have other interim meetings at other locations on demand. And just to give you a quick overview first is we have several uh, work items we're debating and then what we said was when it comes to NFE research, you've got to really focus. Again, it's near term applied research. Let's pick a few topics which are of maximal interest to the community. And then we said, you know, the 3M listing found the maximal attraction with talking to several folks, operators, vendors, researchers, everybody, right? And essentially the three work items are the first one is policy-based resource management. This is around resource optimization, open APIs. And to give you a business idea of the problems, business side of the problems you're trying to solve here is, uh, you know, reducing capex, reducing opex, and also addressing regulatory requirements such as, you know, energy efficiency. And the second one is analytics for visibility and orchestration. Uh, this includes real-time analytics around all subsystems, compute, storage, network, energy, and also we're looking at introducing machine learning concepts. Uh, to kind of take these forward to the next level. And again, this, I would say, is coming to the category of uh, mainly operational, uh, more than CapEx uh, benefits. And also, this helps in introducing new business models around analytics and all um, other ideas. And the last one is uh, service verification uh, with regards to security and resiliency. Uh, this is kind of a critical piece, especially operationally, to make sure whatever you're configured is you know, behaving correctly and also address security issues. Uh, that's where this maps. Um, and uh, we're hoping to have a direct impact on uh, the OpenStack Telco working group and several other projects, which I'll talk about shortly, the specific details. So now we talked about HCNFE, OPNFE, and NFERG. So kind of this is a nice, uh, you know, positioning diagram of how all these uh, fit in. And here you have, many of you may have seen this picture. This is the HCNFE reference architecture. And uh, you know, as you can see, uh, the initial focus of OPNFE is around the virtualized infrastructure manager and also the other NFVI components, really the NFE infrastructure components, and not really the orchestration or OSS PSS. Right? Uh, whereas the N the HC NFE has gone and you know uh, gone into detail on all these aspects, and where we see NFE research group playing a role is we talked about work item one policy based resource management. We feel that uh, primarily playing a role the VIM the virtual infrastructure manager and orchestrator. Of course, it's not limited to these, but the maximum impact will be here. The next work item analytics for visibility and orchestration will map to VIM, the virtual infrastructure manager, and the VNF managers, which are managing individual VNFs such as firewall, load balancer, or CDNs. And the third work item, um, the security and service verification, we see the maximum value in the OSS, VSS, and also the orchestrator. Right? So kind of a nice mapping of how these things are and how the uh, NFE research group work items are. So, so I wanted to give you a little more detail on the, our, the NFE research group uh, first work item and how this was conceptualized. Um, as you know, um, the first thing to realize is NFE is not cloud. And if you take a cloud data center today, uh, it's in locations where capacity is not constrained, energy is not constrained. Consider a data center in Oregon. I know, we're just building it there so that energy is cheap. You know, it's not an issue. But now imagine uh, virtualizing a central office in San Francisco or Chicago, right? How it's not, it's going to be an expensive value proposition because energy is not cheap. Because these are, the NFE value proposition is around in-network data centers. And that's where what we feel is there is an opportunity, in fact, huge opportunity for uh, while we're doing this for operational savings, OPEX, and also addressing regulatory requirements. That's where energy efficiency is a hot topic, as we see. And in fact, we had a talk plus demo on uh, policy-based uh, you know, energy efficiency using analytics, uh, using OpenStack Congress yesterday. 
So um, that's what this work item is. And um, so the related OpenStack uh, projects, here are we see OpenStack Heat, an orchestration, uh, OpenStack Congress, uh, which is policy as a service project. And he talked about the proof of concept demo yesterday. And uh, also, there was a, there is an ongoing project, Solver Scheduler, uh, which is around displacement and scheduling. We see relevance there, too. And uh, here is a link to the related uh, NFE research group drafts. We have an overarching uh, draft on policy, how policy needs to be communicated across applications and different layer, I mean, layers in the infrastructure and also subsystems. Um, and also specifically uh, one on um, the IAAS uh, use case, where we actually go down to a system analysis and also others around service chaining. And so now, um, this is kind of a nice mapping of uh, uh, the NFE RG and how it relates to OP NFE. Uh, we see four projects there. The first one is the copper, uh, which is the policy project. Essentially, this is around identifying gaps in uh, the virtualized infrastructure deployment policies, uh, especially the upstream work which is happening in ODI and OpenStack. The other is the uh, promise or the uh, resource manager, uh, which is basically uh, resource res reservation across all subsystems. And the third one is the resource scheduler, which is focused on constraint and policy-based resource scheduling. And um, the last one is the movie or intent-based abstraction layer, where it actually takes all these projects and uh, various projects and builds an abstraction layer. And as we can see, these are more requirement projects, but uh, NFERG, the focus is take it to the next level and do a system analysis, you know, proof of concept. And the next work item, so um, here essentially, uh, though analytics is, uh, you know, it's often talked about common topic. I think some of the sticky problems we see especially are around you know, simple monitoring techniques, you know, periodic monitoring, which doesn't scale. You keep polling around CPU utilization or how energy is used or how memory is used. But instead, we are looking at more of not the poll models, the push models. Basically, uh, you know, can you uh, make sure that you're pushing statistics only at the times when it's needed, right? And the uh, answer is it's not that simple to implement because you need to know what thresholds you need to use uh, you know, to push information. And these thresholds are very dynamic depending on the type of deployment. And that's where we see machine learning coming and adding huge value there. We're actually learning the type of workloads which are there dynamically and deciding that these are the thresholds which need to be programmed dynamically so that the right amount of information can be exported to the various uh, layers and infrastructures as an orchestrator to make the right events happen in a much more scalable way than simple polling. Kind of give you a detail of ideas we're thinking about. So that said, we see the biggest impact to, when it comes to OpenStack project or an OpenStack telemetry, uh, the CELOMETER is, the, I think, we see a big play there. There could be other projects too. Again, this is not exhaustive. And we have a related uh, draft and NFERG on this topic around uh, real-time analytics. And the, uh, when it comes to OP NFE, there we go. We have a nice project called Prediction, right, which is kind of solving another interesting problem, the failure pro prediction problem, but is also quite complex, where I think potentially the machine learning concepts could be applied. And it works in close cooperation with Doctor, which is more of the failure manager in uh, OP NFE land. So the last but not least, the security and service verification. What we see here is um, in NFE deployments especially, uh, the configuration is going to be very dynamic, especially around viral use cases, where you're saying that, hey, there is suddenly an increase in demand and decrease in demand. So basically, uh, VMs, DNFs, everything is going to move around. That means there is a rapid configuration change. And this uh, introduces a further challenge you know, around consistency, whether different layers uh, you know, from top to bottom are consistent as you expect them to be, uh, the way you want it to be when it's configured. Right? That's the challenge we're ad addressing here. And here, 
um, again, when it comes to the OpenStack landscape, uh, what I found is very interesting. Every component has basically something around verification, right? And uh, I think the key ideas we can bring in are more of how you solve this problem real time and combine kind of the proactive and reactive models because the proactive model, this periodic polling doesn't scale very well. How do you make it more reactive, event-based? That's kind of the ideas we're thinking in NFERG to take this forward. And we have a related draft uh, around this on service verification in NFERG. And mapping to OP NFE, we have a um, BNF uh, FG forwarding graph project uh, where this is talking about service chaining at various layers in NFE architecture. And you know, uh, service chaining is the heart of NFE, and service verification also becomes a key part because you know your the service chain is going to be extremely dynamic, especially under viral conditions, viral events. And I'll hand it over to uh, Pradeep to uh, uh, close and talk a yeah, little bit about OPNFE. Yeah, so just uh, Ramki talked about several projects which we could find mapping to the research projects at uh, uh, NFVRG. But I just wanted to give you a landscape of one representation of the current set of projects in OPNFV. The far left, the colors, well, yes, the colors are the blue on the left, far left, um, uh, are build and integration projects. The little sliver in the middle, the green, are more deployment and testing. But the bulk of the projects are around requirements and new features. And uh, I'm obviously not going to go through all of these projects. Uh, Ramki talked about a few of them. But if you go to the wiki uh, on OPNFE, all the projects are described in detail. And uh, what uh, I would uh, request is all of you who are interested is just get involved and go look at the wiki, get involved in the chats, get involved in the online meetings and the uh, IRC channels which are going on. Uh, there's a lot of activity. It's all open. It's an open source project. You don't have to be a member to join. If you're a member, all the better. So please join and uh, contribute to this and help build the bridge between OPNFV and the upstream projects because we rely on those. So if you're active in OpenStack and one of these issues interests you, please join and help to make that bridge. Uh, I wanted to show one other thing. You may have seen this earlier in the week. Um, the first release uh, from OPNFV is called Arno. It's, it's going to be out soon. Uh, people keep asking about the date. I'll just say it's weeks, not months. So, um, but it's, it's an initial build of an integration of various things you see on the left. So based on uh, uh, OpenStack, KVM, OpenDaylight, OVS. So fundamentally, it is, as you can see, an integration of various upstream things. and. Uh, the other piece is that we're trying to make sure that it runs on different kinds of hardware. So the testing has been going on in three labs around the world, uh, and now we're trying to get the uh, uh, common uh, setup available so that we can open it up to everybody. Uh, but this just gives you a flavor that OPNFV has uh, an interaction with many different open source projects. And OpenStack is one of the more important ones, but it's not the only one. So a lot of the issues we deal with are really around uh, integration and how these fit together and how the uh, sort of process models and all of these work together, which are uh, perhaps not addressed in the individual open source efforts. And I'm going to end with an answer to a question which sometimes keeps coming up. Well, you're trying to use cloud techniques, uh, so what's so special? Just use whatever's being developed for the cloud, and that's your NFV. And unfortunately, in a carrier's network, there are many, many different aspects which don't map to a typical enterprise environment. And here are some examples of things which need more work in research, in open source, and other areas. Uh, the price performance issue is a big one. You have certain functions which really need high performance. You just don't get them out of all the uh, current cloud systems. You need special techniques in addition to that. Uh, you need the ability to select specific hardware, not have an undifferentiated pool of hardware, all those kinds of things. Uh, you need much more 
a much finer grained characterization of the infrastructure for this. And you need to expose capabilities from the infrastructure to the software. And then the other thing, a favorite of mine, is that there is a whole wide area network which is the main network of the network operators. And when we're virtualizing these functions sitting in data centers, whether it's a large data center or spread out all over the network, those data centers are, those functions, though they're virtualized and sitting in a data center infrastructure, they're participating in the f network function across the network. And so you cannot have a silo, you cannot just have a simple view of a network, it has to be a global view. And so a holistic view of SDN techniques and NFV is absolutely required. So I just wanted to give you a flavor of, at a very high level, the kinds of uh, issues. Of course, there's lots of detail behind this. There are other issues you haven't put up. One of them, which Ramki mentioned, is very interesting. The whole idea of a distributed uh, uh, data center, which is composed of pieces which are not uniform, right? I may have a very small footprint, a very small set of capabilities here, and I may have a large set of capabilities here. When I put workloads, I have to distinguish between those. I can't just say, okay, I'll just load balance and put it anywhere. It depends on where that is. So uh, we'll end with that and sort of open for questions. Uh, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, just uh, closing, um, uh, I, the NFE Research Group and IRTF is completely open, open. Uh, welcome participation <laughs> and, uh, you know, Thank you. We're open for questions. Yeah. Any questions? All right. Thank oh, you. Good. Thank you. Uh, can you explain how the NFE research group contributes to OpenNFE or to Etsy or to OpenStack? Oh, sure. So, essentially, what we do is uh, a practical example. I'll scroll back up a slide. In fact. So a very practical example, what we did was uh, the third link, the NFE IA extract. We have actually gone down and did a system analysis with respect to uh, OpenStack, uh, Open Data, and OP NFE. So kind of, you take this idea, here is an idea, and then how you actually implement it, and uh, which modules it maps to in OpenStack, right? Not stop at a high level, and also the APIs and other things. That's exactly the thought process as we move ahead with each of the topics we're researching on. We talked about several topics on policy-based resource management and all those. So go down deeper so that uh, work can happen in OpenStack or Open Daylight OPNFE. And you contribute that to OPNFE? Uh, of course, uh, yes, yes. That's what's the question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So because OPNFE has Pradeep rightly mentioned is more of an integration project. So we are actually looking at the pipeline. So basically, architecturally, how it maps to OpenStack and OpenDaylight. And eventually, it will come to OpenFE. And that's exactly what we are thinking about the, our talk yesterday, how we move that work to OpenFE as an energy efficiency project. That, those are the kind of ideas we have. Anyone else? We have a few more minutes. Yeah. So, um, so as you can see, Etsy is more of requirements, right? Um, that's the primary goal. But whereas this is actually taking the requirements and also a little more of the advanced ones, and uh, you know, drilling down, right? And uh, in fact, my co-chair, Diego Lopez, is a technical chair of Etsy. So we exactly are completely coordinated on what we do so that we never overlap. Right. All right, quiet audience. They must have explained everything very clearly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.